Once I leave here, I really like put it in my rear view mirror, and yeah. I really don't worry about what you guys are out there doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the trouble that you guys seem to be causing all over the valley these days. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, Yesterday, this this whole K. Adam thing has got it totally gotten out of hand. It did, yes. And um, I, I thought your bit yesterday was very funny about Thank your you. interaction initially. Yeah. I was laughing. I mm-hmm. thought it was funny. Everybody here at CBS Network thought that it was funny. It, I guess K. Adams didn't <laughs> think it was funny. When in actuality, we're promoting her show, promoting her, promoting Fandle and everything else. And she came in here and she just like stormed off and wouldn't even talk to you. That's right. So there is video right now that CBS Sports Network is playing of her walking briskly away from me after this interaction so she comes by she's with this producer guy who is just basically he doesn't look at me nothing he's just walking with her and she comes up and I'm standing at the end of the stage here and she's walking right by me and she goes heard you were talking about me so I laugh thinking that she's gonna laugh at this right yes she goes so I felt you up I said well I didn't really say it that way she goes Interesting. <laughs> she started stomping. I mean, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. just <laughs> right by. You know, when a woman stomps, man, that's not a good thing. You know that. No, I know it's not a good thing. And I told Al just now, I, I, I'd i rather come face to face with a mountain lion than that look again. That just shot daggers right through me. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. I mean, oh, listen, my God. You know, all the all the platitudes that you gave her and told her, you know, how important she is and how much everybody respects her and mm-hmm. everything. I guess all that stuff got lost in whatever somebody told her that you may have said about her. Yeah, that's I guess so. That's basically what happened. You know you know that's what happened. No, I know that's what happened. She's not up watching. There's no way she watched the video. There's no way she listened to the whole no, segment. She, somebody told her that you made fun of her in some way with without telling her that 90% of what you said was nothing but how great she is, how wonderful he is, uh, how thoughtful she is. How I said she's thinks. the it thing in NFL media right now. Yeah, That's exactly. what I said. Right, so I guess, I guess you know. That's not good enough. This is what happens when they only get part of the story. You know that. And I also said I'm not mad at her. I'm mad at me for possessing man boobs and allowing this interaction to happen. David uh, said that. It's so ridiculous. The whole thing is so it, no. It is, it is ridiculous. So <laughs> you got it. She's everybody's got to calm down, and she's got to realize that you know the other night. Like I said, the other ninety percent of what you said about that interaction was nothing but just absolutely glowing and respectful towards who she was. And the reason we loved it is because of the way you self deprecate. You were self deprecating, and also the way that you uh, basically talked about you being uncomfortable. Because of your man boobs. Exactly. And, you know, it's not something that we normally talk about on no. this show, but I, you have spoken about your man boobs mm-hmm. before. Sure. Um, and it's something that we we that know you, mm-hmm. uh, we realize that you're very aware of that. Yes. And uh, it was just kind of interesting that she just grabbed on the one and honked you twice. Right. It just very, very interesting. Maybe she was listening and maybe she knew that you did have them. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, oh my she God. Wanted to I, feel I don't want to get her mad at me. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I don't think so. Uh, one more time, guys. Can you run that that walk as she is blowing past me like a speed walker at the marathon? My hand. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that walk. And she's got the hand up and, oh, and the purse and everything man. else. That is like the L.A. walk of, of like, hell. Like, she's pissed <laughs> off. Like, you can tell. When that hand, that right hand is up, you see that right hand is up? Yep. And the big bag is on the arm? Well, forget about that, oh, man. Forget it. Forget, forget it. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> what happened? Oh, my God. The deal, Spike doesn't make it any better. You know, Spike's like, he, he you know, he's trying to pour s- salt on the wound. He sends me this fake tweet from <laughs> Awful Announcing that yes. I will not read on the air. But <laughs> basically, <laughs> pretending like Kay Adams said something about this that made it even worse. So you know what he's doing? He's doing exactly what a program director should do. He's stirring it up he's he's mixing it up you know what i mean oh man i was thinking like if chernoff were here he would not handle it that way obviously but he would be like worried about what are you doing nobody <laughs> cares about your man boobs why <laughs> why now i'm talking to the the head of the head of gambling itself is calling me <laughs> There's a head. Did you even know there was a CEO of gambling itself? He's pissed off now at you too. Look at what you did. Now I'm dealing with it. Now does that make you feel good? I was supposed to be horseback riding with Al, and instead I'm dealing with this. Are you familiar with Kamala Harris? She was on the phone yesterday, and and she was pissed off about this. You know she's a woman as well.
This is a problem. And they have the State of the Union. They're talking about you. Oh, God. Just live one day as me. Just do it and you'll understand. Oh, God. So anyway. Uh, yeah. So perfect. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So yesterday, obviously, a very combustible day around here. Sure. At Radio was. Row. And uh, listen, we're here when nobody else is here. So how we can get ourselves in trouble. I know. With nobody else around is amazing. Right. That, that is true. And you forget that when you're sitting here and you just, we have the great crew around us, but there's nobody else here. Like you forget sometimes that people are listening to what you're saying <laughs> yes. in this situation. Uh, but she obviously heard it. But it, it happens a million times in radio. Like someone went up to her, can you believe this guy? This is this Geo Boomer and Geo says you're feeling him up and like blah blah blah. What a jerk. What a radio hack. And then she doesn't listen to the whole thing. Oh, of course, you know, she's the greatest. She's the you know the most uh, in- impactful. Whatever the hell else you said <laughs> yesterday, I forget it. But it is what it is. This is the world we live in. So you know, all I can tell you is don't worry about it. Well, I'm gonna go into a darkness retreat for four days when I go home. You and Aaron Rodgers are here. Reflect on all of this. So and where is he doing this darkness uh, uh, retreat? I don't know. I mean, he's he's. I don't think he's going back to Peru to do the ayahuasca, he said. So it's probably somewhere that's out of the country, I would assume. But, but I don't know. And they slide food under the door, and he sits there, and it's just him and himself, and that's it. The whole thing. So I'm just picturing like the, the the meditation music that you would hear. Like you ever go like you go to like spas and stuff. So there's no Wi-Fi, right? Like you hear like you know when you walk in, you're getting massaged somewhere, and you just this is Aaron Rodgers in the dark meditating, waiting for an answer from his guru. You know? Yeah. Aaron, you've got a big decision to make. Go to the Jets. Go to the Jets. <laughs> go to the Jets. You've got options. Go to the Jets. Go to the Jets. You go to the go Jets. You could go to Las Vegas, where it's a no-tax state, and you're there in one of the entertainment capitals of the world. Go to the Jets. Go to the Jets. And you're go to close the Jets. to California. Or you could get taxed through your ass <laughs> on the East Coast in the lovely state of New Jersey. Go to the Jets. Go to the Jets. Go to the Jets. Where you play in a shared stadium with the New York Giants. And you have a coach who has no idea what he's doing. And then your old coach who rode you like you were Seattle Slough to a head coaching job. Go to the Jets. Go to the Jets. You think that the lights come on and he's like, (laughs) We're going to the Jets! We're going to the Jets! No, I don't think so. Yeah, probably not. And I would say that there's a very good chance that Derek Carr is going to be off the market. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, the Derek Carr is going to be off the market. You think he's going to be off the market? Maybe. It sounds like that because uh, he is given, uh, he's allowed now to talk to the New Orleans Saints. So remember I was telling you that uh, the Raiders still could trade Derek Carr up to a a certain point. I think think it's like February 16th or whatever it is. And that if they work out a trade, that would mean the team that is trading for him would have the first opportunity to talk to him about a contract extension. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like the Saints are looking at where they are sitting. Uh, you know, in the draft, what could be available, and that they are going to make a five-year or four- or five-year commitment to Derek Carr, and they don't want him on the open market. You see what I'm saying? So that's why they're trading for him. So maybe it's a third-round pick or a second-round pick or whatever, but they would not trade that pick uh, to just to talk to Derek Carr. It would be if Derek Carr agrees to a contract, then they would agree to make the trade, and then Derek becomes the starting quarterback for the New Orleans Saints, and that makes complete sense to me because that's one of the teams that is outside – uh, you know, the top 10 when it comes to drafting. Yeah. And they need a starting quarterback of significance, and they're probably convinced themselves that Derek Carr should be their guy. So that's exactly what the Raiders and Derek Carr are doing right now. It sounds like, okay, hey, I would love to go play for New Orleans. Let's see what New Orleans wants to do for me in terms of contract. So maybe they say, hey, look, we'll give you five years, you know, $160, $170 million, something like that, and you're our starting quarterback. And that's that seems to be the way that that thing is now going. Well, one of the things I read yesterday, because a lot of people were jumping to the conclusion that, oh, he's definitely going to the Saints now because of the first team that he's talking to, is that he's really going to go through this process, that it's that this is the first step in many steps of where he's going to go to check things out. That was one thing that I read from a Raiders person yesterday. Now, I, I don't know – if that person yeah, but is right, but he doesn't. He doesn't have to. He could say to the Raiders, "Look, man, you know, I'm not. 
you're not trading me to anybody. I'm waiting until I get to free agency. So this is a case where the Saints probably want to be able to talk to Derek and say, look, we want you. We want you to be our starting, our quarterback, and here is our offer for you. Yeah. And we want to get out in front of everybody so you don't get the free agency. And then if Derek accepts what the Saints are offering him and he wants to go there, then the Saints will con- you know, make the trade with the Raiders, and the Raiders will get something out of it. He doesn't have to do this if he doesn't want to. The fact that he is doing it, and the fact that this is, uh, it seems like it's, it's going and it's moving in that direction, that means that the Saints are you know, giving him what I would consider a legitimate offer. I'm telling you, like, coming to the Jets with him, he doesn't want to come here because the Jets still have hopes out that Zach Wilson may become something. You know, for the Jets, it's got to be like an Aaron Rodgers two-year type of thing, a Baker Mayfield two-year type of thing. This is a mess. I, I, an Andy Dalton two-year type of thing. I this mean, that's is what officially we're a mess. because that's it, what we're talking about. Every day that goes by, it's less and less likely that Aaron Rodgers becomes a Jet, which is something I never believed was going to happen. Now you're telling me Derek Carr's not going to look at the Jets as a desirable destination, and we're going to be stuck with all these other guys that we were talking about. You know, Baker Mayfield, Andy Dalton, whoever the hell else is out there. I mean, and Zach Wilson on the roster. Or maybe they actually go back and start Mike White. I, I don't, I mean, this is, this is where op- we're at now. These are all options on the table. And really what it comes down to also, I would imagine from the Jets' perspective, you know, how aggressive does Woody Johnson want Joe Douglas to be? I mean, aggressive the, with a guy like Aaron right, Rodgers. Right, so it could be. It also could be. Uh, don't forget, Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be. Oh out there. God, please no! I please, please, please no! But that—that's who we're talking about. It doesn't seem like it's going to be Aaron Rodgers. As we sit here this morning, it does not look like it's going to be Aaron Rodgers or Derek Carr. Now, <sighs> could that change if if the Jets do something to change the way that the perception is right now? That could be the case, but it sounds like the Saints right now have identified Derek Carr as their guy. So in order to keep him from going to free agency, they have to make the trade with the Raiders and give Derek Carr the contract that he wants. And then Derek Carr has got to sit there and also say, okay, where are the potential landing spots for me where I can get the most term and the most, and most money? Yeah, and then the options after that are just Carolina. Not- it's the Saints. Yeah, right. So yeah, th- those two, but those two for Derek Carr are probably better places than the Jets, I'm sure. And if if the Raiders, I know that Derek Carr wants to be a free agent, but if somehow the Raiders end up hanging on and want compensation back, uh, you know that that makes it even harder for them to want to trade him within the conference. And those other two teams we just talked about are NFC teams. Now I know it's not the same as Aaron Rodgers because they're done with Derek Carr and they shouldn't necessarily care about where he goes, but we've seen this stuff in the past. Well, he has this contract that has this kind of unique ending to it, and you know they can trade him, and then instead of the Saints meeting what the contract stipulates, the Saints will tear up his contract with the Raiders and start with a whole new contract. And remember, it starts with the guaranteed money, and it's going to be a big number, and if the Saints have identified him as their starting quarterback for the next five years, then this is a smart thing to do. Yeah, and I heard it was a Garrett Wilson with Maggie and Perloff yesterday saying that he would be crying tears of joy if Aaron Rodgers joined the Jets. So this is another one of those things that whoever ends up being the Jets quarterback that isn't Aaron Rodgers. It's amazing that a rookie wide receiver would say that in lieu of uh, a second-year quarterback on his own team that was the second overall draft pick. Well, of course. They I can't mean, it's stand it. like Yeah, but we, we knew that they can't stand Zach Wilson. This oh, I read not... where Sauce Gardner said yesterday that Zach Wilson was a great teammate. Right, sure. Well, that's what he's saying now but after he left. Like that back, tweet, right? He essentially liked the tweet of Zach Wilson sucks, and then pretended like he didn't like that tweet. So we know what Sauce thinks about Zach Wilson. I mean, is there, there's all sorts of stuff going on right now. All this, sorts of stuff. That is right. All right, it is Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network live from Radio Row. 